day to you. Welcome to the Old Path Bible Study. I'm Pastor Curtis Hutchinson here in my office at Crossway Church in Queen City, Texas. And we're glad to have you with us whenever it is you found us on social media. We are live Monday and Thursday mornings teaching this great book of Hebrews, 8.30 a.m. Central Time. We're in chapter 11, where we'll be today. And uh, we're just excited about what the Lord's showing us to, to share with you as we gather around God's Word, to hear the truth of God's Word, to follow the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, into even more truth. And uh, there's no end of the learning as we find ourselves walking as the disciples of Christ, following Him, continuing in His Word and allowing the truth that He is through what He did at Calvary to make us free and more free in experience day after day. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Also, Friday mornings, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Central Time, we're teaching the book of 1 Peter. It's been phenomenal. The Lord is blessing us, pouring out of His Spirit of the great truth of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and what it means to, to stand fast in this faith and, and just to hang tight to the, the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Friday mornings, join us at 9 a.m. Central Time for Cross Time with Pastor Curtis. Look forward to the teaching in the morning. Uh, the website, thecrosswaychurch.com. Uh, click on the blog uh, icon, read a couple of blogs we've put there for you. Uh, click on the store icon, see the commentaries that are available, uh, the CDs, preaching CDs, teaching CDs, and uh, Angel Pieces music CD is there. And, and we're just excited about what the Lord is doing through this great ministry of reconciliation He's given us here at Crossway Church. Also, the YouTube channel, Curtis Hutchinson 316. Everything we do here, such as what we're doing right now, the Wednesday Wednesday night, Sunday mornings, uh, Monday, Thursday, Friday teachings, they all get uploaded to the YouTube channel. So avail yourself to the YouTube channel and please subscribe and follow along. You'll get alerts when we go live so you'll know you have an opportunity. You're driving down the road, you just click on it and listen. So, also, Determined Camp Meeting, October the 6th through the 9th. What a blessed time that we're going to have. Determined Camp Meeting started back in 2014, and uh, ever since then, every year, uh, we have had a great gathering, a great conference, a great camp meeting of, of, of those who gather together with like precious faith being in the sacrifice of Christ, the focus of the cross, uh, God's focus. We might as well go ahead and get it out. That's, that's God's focus. That's what he did before the foundation of the world so he could do everything he did. He, he has done at, during the time he's given us to be in the world as humanity. And so uh, we're, we're excited about this year's determined camp meeting. It's going to be held in Palestine, Texas at Christ Community Church. Pastors Clint and Lindsey Bass there in Palestine. It's going to be one more great gathering. Uh, the Lord is faithful to do great and mighty things beyond what we could ever imagined when we come together striving together for the faith of the gospel and the focus is the gospel and that's what we're striving to reach for. That's what we're hearing. That's what we're desiring to hear and there's a great excitement in these camps because when the Lord is able to get you back to your first love and you gather with those around the great sacrifice of Christ in your first love, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, what a joy it is. And we've had several years of great camp meetings, and I just want to invite you personally this year. We have people that come from all over the country, and this year's Determined Camp Meeting will not be broadcast live. 
They will be all uploaded after it's all over with at some point. But if you want to be there during the actual camp meeting and see and hear everything, you'll have to be there this year if you want to see it and experience it live. And again, there's people that come literally from all over the country in every direction, north, south, east, and west. And I just hope you'd be one of those that come this year. Also, uh, Cross Country, Mahari Warfield, this Sunday evening at 6 p.m. Central Time, I'll be a guest on his show, and we'll be discussing the rest of God. So uh, make sure you tune in and uh, you get a blessing because if there's anything the church needs, it's the rest of God that is always the experience when we learn to keep our faith in the sacrifice of Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Blessed be God. Today is the 18th day of August 2022, and we are in Hebrews chapter 11, and this is part 16. Let's look in our Bibles this morning, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 12, and I want to back up a verse as we uh, didn't mention something that's of utmost importance that we needed to mention in verse 12, and the Lord showed me that just this morning sitting here looking at this Bible verse, so let's read verse 12 in Hebrews chapter 11, look at what he says to us today. Therefore sprang there even of one, as him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. Speaking here of the promise that would come through Abraham and Sarah, specifically Abraham, through his seed to bring about the nation of Israel, and not just the nation of Israel, but all the, the generation of of those that would be of the faith Abraham had, those that would have faith in Jesus Christ, the Redeemer. And, and here the Holy Spirit shows us that uh, it, 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 he says, Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead. You see, God doing what he did in the beyond age of Abraham and Sarah uh, uh, their, their, their childbearing days in the natural were over. It's as they're 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 uh, they're reproducing or, or you know uh, what word shall I use? Their reproducing facilities within their bodies were in the natural. It was over. They were well beyond that. And I believe it is a type and a shadow when the Holy Spirit says that the Lord did this through him, even uh, him as, which was as good as dead, because everything God has done, he's literally done through the one he sent his son to literally be dead for our sins, to lay his life down in death. And, but because all this that Abraham experienced was ultimately through the one who would literally be dead to open the doors of glory to all who would have believed, including the old covenant saints and the new covenant saints that was all wrapped around and based on Jesus Christ and what he would do in his death for the forgiveness of our sins as he there <coughs> on the cross would justify us and become the door of distribution as the slain lamb of all that God would offer to humanity, that he would offer to those who would simply come and believe upon him through faith in the son he gave on Calvary's cross. <coughs> Excuse me. A very important scripture is Revelation chapter 5 verse 12 that reveals to us that Jesus had to become the slain lamb to be able to receive the things mentioned there. Let's go and look at those things this morning. It's not as though we haven't before, but let's look at them again because this is 
of great significance. And, and what I'm trying to say is this morning, just because Jesus died on the cross doesn't mean everybody's going to heaven. We have to believe, depend upon, trust in that what he did there in death that what he did there in death alone is our escape from the guilt and the fear and the shame of sin as we trust in what he did there. Our faith from the heart becomes identifiable to God that that is what we're trusting in and we're born again. Everybody else, it won't do them any good. But not only those who've been born again to be able to receive the forgiveness, the removal of fear, the removal of guilt and shame, we also have to continue trusting moment by moment in the slain lamb. By the way, that is what we're being made conformable to. You're not if you're not looking at it. You're not if you're not trusting in it. So, See, the church needs to hear this. And, and it's through our faith today, moment by moment, in the slain lamb that we receive. Let's read Revelation 5 and 12. Say, these are the angels, uh, uh, multiplied millions of angels in heaven. And this is chapter 5. This is a future picture of you and I and all of God's people will be hearing this in person. We'll be seeing this in reality there. No longer reading about it. Our eyes will behold it. Our ears will behold it. Our feet will stand there where all this is going on. And we will see these things. But let's read the beauty of it on this day. Hallelujah. In verse 12, <coughs> Revelation 5, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive. See there? Jesus, listen, Jesus already had the power of God, he said, to lay his life down and take it up again. But he had to be slain to receive, to be able to distribute, distribute, all these things, listen, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Again, Jesus dying does not save everybody. Jesus dying saves those who trust in Jesus' death for the forgiveness of their sins. Jesus' death on Calvary's cross as the lamb slain does not just make all the benefits work in the Christian's life. If it did, we wouldn't need much of what's written in the New Testament, all the warnings that are there from for us telling us not to fall from grace, telling us how to keep from falling from grace, telling us how to not end up with Jesus knocking on the door trying to get back into fellowship with the church. Uh, we wouldn't have to be told uh, how to prevent how to avoid becoming a dead church, Revelation chapter 3, the church of Sardis. Uh, we wouldn't have to be told these things if the slain lamb, the power and all the things he received through his death just automatically worked in our lives. And this is very important. This is what God is saying today. Those who aren't saying this uh, are hurting the church uh, that we must moment by moment not an hour in the morning, not an hour in the evening. Moment by moment, we must be trusting in the work of Christ at Calvary. Most of the church would say, well, nobody can. And, 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 and the moments that we're not, we're getting ourselves into trouble. The moments that we're not trusting in the slain lamb to be able to receive through him as our mediator, the things he received only through his death, we're going to get ourselves in trouble. So let's go back over here now where we were. Hebrews chapter 11. And now we can see in verse 13, these all that we're reading about died in faith, died believing. We covered this on the last session. Having not received the promises, and we talked about how they had some, they walked in some, but there's always promises. 
that the saints, even you and me, are going to have to be reaching for. Galatians says we wait for the hope of righteousness by the Spirit through faith. We're still waiting. Watch. Let's go ahead and read it. You'll see what I'm talking about this morning. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Oh, that God's people would look at what he's promised. I said, look at it. I didn't say think about it every once in a while. I said, look at it. Embrace what's coming, my friends, because it's at the door. We're at the end of a 6,000-year laborious time and Jesus is about to come our Lord of, of the Sabbath, Lord of the rest. He is our rest and he's going to come and reign the last 7,000th year period, that 1,000 year last 1,000 year period. He's going to rule and to reign, my friend, just like there's a seven day work week and a seventh day rest. There's a, set, there's a six year uh, a, a work year load the way God set it up in the old covenant. And there's a seventh year Sabbath. Well, there is a 6,000 year labor and there's a 7,000th year time of rest. And we are at the threshold of that transition from dispensation to dispensation. We are the ones, we are the generation that are, we are about to trans, we are about to leave this planet. We're about to go away to the place our Lord has reserved for us and then we'll return with him to rule and reign with him in his righteousness. Hallelujah. So I hope you're getting ready for that because it, it's at the threshold. Those who are going around saying, well, we've been saying that forever. Well, no, they're not paying attention. And listen, I'm not necessarily talking about just the things that God is doing as he puts the hooks in the nation's jaws and pulls them into place. The prophet Zechariah said the Lord would bring the nations into one place and plead with them concerning his people, his nation. He will, he's doing that now. They have no idea. They think they're doing it for oil, for, for a passageway through this sea. They, they think they're in control and they're doing it for this. God has the hooks in their jaws. He's bringing them all into a place to plead with them concerning his nation, Israel. And my friends, at any moment, at any moment, the 70th week of Daniel is about to begin. You and I, as God's people, we are about to leave this earth. We are about to go. And don't listen to the naysayers. That, well, they've always said it. We know it's coming, but we don't know what day. You start talking about the rapture, and most Christians are going to just pipe right up and say, Well, no man knows what day or the hour. Jesus said that. He taught that, and that's right. But he also rebuked Israel for not knowing the time, the time of his visitation. And you and I, my friend, we got enough Bible to know we're in that time. He's about to come for his bride, and I could only pray that you, as the bride of Christ, are making herself ready. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Watch this. They, they saw the promises. Are you still looking at what God's promised you? They were persuaded of them. They embraced them. They confessed that we're just passing through. We're just strangers and pilgrims. We're about to leave everything we've, <clears throat> we've had access to. All the blessings that God has blessed us with, we're about to leave it behind because none of it's good enough for heaven. Hallelujah. But verse 14 says, For they that say such things declare plainly that they're seeking a country. Those that always talking about, we just passing through. This is not our home. You know, when I got COVID last year and I was laying there and oh, it was 18 days of horrible misery and I thought I might be one of those passing on over into glory, I wasn't worried about it. It'd been a whole lot better than COVID. Matter of fact, glory lands a whole lot better 
than any great day we've got going on here. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And I got news for you. I'm seeking that country. I'm looking for my blessed Savior to come today. I hope you are. I hope you're looking for Him at every turn. I hope His that your mind is stayed on Him. I hope that, that, that you're really looking for Him. You know, Titus chapter 2 teaches us that <clears throat> those who are under grace, living according to the grace of God, are looking for their blessed Savior. They're looking for His appearing. I hope that you're looking for your Savior today and you don't have Him on the back burner. If you do, that's probably why He's turning up the front burner on you. You need to put Him back on the front burner of your heart, so to speak. He says here in verse 14, For they say, these folks, not everybody, not everybody sees the promises of God afar off and, uh, and are persuaded of them and em are embracing them and going around confessing that, 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 man, quit worrying about all this stuff. Quit worrying about all this stuff. We about to leave here. They, they're the ones that are declaring plainly that they're seeking the coming country, that place the Lord has prepared for us. And truly, get this now, verse 15, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from where they came out, <laughs> they might have had an opportunity to return. Christian, don't start go thinking back in your mind where you came from. Don't, don't fall in love with where you are. Don't be consumed by the things that make up this old world, and even, even the good things. Don't be consumed by them, but keep looking ahead at the promises that the Lord has promised you in the days to come. The Bible says set your affection on things above, not, he, not on things of this world. And I don't care what they are. Yes, we're to love our families and thank God for our families, our parents, our spouses, our children, our grandchildren. But some people have literally made that their everything. It, they, all those things are before Christ. They, they will put their family before obedience to the Word of God and, and claim that, well, God gave me this family. Well, God gave us all kind of things. But we're not to put none of the... The, the things that have been created before the Creator, hallelujah, uh, we're to keep Him before all things. And we don't just because we say we do. He is before all things if it's Him who is before all things, guiding us and leading us. And, and He is before our families. He's above our families. He's, he's above all things. And, and what He's promised us, is above all things. Hallelujah. So let's read this verse 15 again. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from where they came out, they might have had opportunity to return. If all we do is think back of where we came from, where God brought us out of, we're going back. If you can't, listen, if you don't determine to set your affection on things above, if you don't determine to know nothing other than Christ and Him crucified, we're watching it happen now. Ministers are going back, dabbling in things that they told us not to dabble in, not to intermix. When you start looking back, you're going back. I don't care who you are as a child of God. You are not to look back at anything other than the one thing the Lord points back to, and that's what he did before the foundation of the world and manifest on Calvary's hill 2,000 years ago. That's the cross of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're looking back at anything else, you're going back. You, there's no doubt about it. You're headed where you're looking. You need to understand that. And at this point, I need to remind us that the church, those who are the church, who are being conformed into the image of God's Son, those He foreknew from before the foundation of the world, are being conformed. They're being made conformable to the death of Jesus. A minister can't say this enough. I know our flesh gets tired of saying it, and our flesh will say, well, the people are tired of hearing that. God ain't tired of me 
saying it and he ain't tired of his people hearing it because that's what he's always been talking about. That's what he's always been pointing to. And when we start looking back at anything other, that's what we're going to. If we keep looking at that which God says we're being made conformable unto, then we'll find ourselves going from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord as we behold that glorious image that we're being changed into. And it's Jesus Christ in that that character as the Lamb that He became for us at the cross. Not before. Not before. Jesus was always who He was. But at the cross, he became that which is impartable to us, that which allows us to come in and partake of and be made like who he is when he gave his life in utter surrender, utter humility, utter surrender, utter obedience. It all belongs to him And it's only attainable by us if our faith is in what he did in death as the lamb. And you and I don't need to forget that. We don't move on without the lamb. We move on with the lamb. Hallelujah. Deny yourself. Take up your cross every day to be able to follow him, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let these ministers go who make everything about a focus of money, a focus even of Pentecost, a focus of this. A fo- there is no other focus that proceeds out of heaven but the focus of the Lamb which is in heaven. Heaven's focus is the Lamb, and when God gives vision to any people, It comes through the Lamb. Jesus told Nicodemus, you can't enter the kingdom or even see it until you're born again. The only vision that comes from God is the heavenly vision, which is the slain Lamb. Hallelujah. And when ministers make the focus anything other, and I'm not talking about not ministering on being deacons or elders or faith or forgiveness or marriage or family living or any of those things, they're all in the word of God for us, but they must all be dipped in the blood of Jesus or there is absolutely no way other than our carnal and fleshly attempts to do them. It takes the Spirit of God to teach us, to impart to us what he's teaching and to walk us into what he is teaching us in experience. And that is an impossibility without faith. And it must be the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Galatians 2, 20, the Bible tells us there, that's the faith we live by. That means our object of faith must always be the slain lamb. Hallelujah. And when, and when the focus, and that's why we've said for years, there can be 10,000 sermons and there are. But the message in every sermon must be the preaching of the cross. Ministers who aren't stepping into this great outpouring of the spirit of the truth of God are missing. They're missing the boat. God's not looking for you for a season to preach the cross. He's looking for you to carry the cross and preach the cross to the finish line. It's the only help there is available from the Lord to the lost or to the saved. His words written on paper mean nothing unless they are dipped in the blood, unless we see them through the blood. The Holy Spirit brings the power of God for faithful, fruitful living when the heart is touching the blood. The Holy Spirit's never saved a soul that didn't first, with the heart, touch the sacrifice of Jesus, the blood of his cross. And it's the same way after we're born again. And every Christian really knows it utterly. That's why we'll have to 
pay a huge uh, uh, price at the judgment seat of Christ for knowing these things and yet avoiding them because our carnal fleshly desires under the fear of men we allow to drive us away from the focus of Calvary and we can't do that any longer. It doesn't matter how many we've honored and esteemed and how many have even been focused on this message but no longer are. We must keep the focus that is God's focus, the vision that comes from heaven. Heaven, the vision of the slain lamb, the only avenue through which vision comes. No one sees the word of God properly outside of its righteous context. And that is the avenue through which Jesus, who knew no sin, became our sin-bearing offering that we might become the righteousness of God, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And as long as that's what our heart's faith is still touching and no other objects come along, such as the purpose-driven life, the government of 12, the, the walk of Emmaus, the, the quoting this and the, and the doing this and our giving of all, anything other that we trust in other than our identifiable faith in the sacrifice, the death of Jesus, the Holy Spirit cannot impart what needs to be imparted. And people who disagree with what I'm saying right now don't have a leg to stand on and, the, and they make God a respecter of persons. And that would be making God a sinner. God has only one way. His name is Jesus. But that one way of Jesus is the way of the sacrifice to be saved and to live saved and to have grace for everything that God has called you to touch or to put your feet in or to be able to hear properly. And we need to know these things. So guess what? Let me read this. We're out of time, but let's read this. Verse 15 and 16, and then we'll try to quit. Verse 15, And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from where they came out of, they might have had an opportunity to have returned. But now they, we, desire a better country. That is, a heavenly country. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. I want you to know today God has prepared for you a city, a city wherein dwells righteousness, and he's made you the righteousness of who he is in Christ Jesus through your faith in the sacrifice. And you can experience the very things that are written in the Word of God. According to God's will, if you keep your faith and identifiable to God faith in the sacrifice of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that is what you are being made conformable to. So look there. Depend upon who Jesus is and what He did there. We don't know it, but when we move away from the cross and let it go and it's no longer our focus at all times, we're looking back from where we came, even if we realize it or not. Oh, we think we're going ahead, but that's the carnal flesh deceitfully deceiving us, thinking we're moving on, but without the cross, we're only moving back instead of going ahead. And we can't even be looking ahead properly unless our hearts are planted together by faith in the likeness of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks for all of you who support prayerfully and financially the work of the ministry here at Crossway Church. Uh, I'm just so thankful for all those of you who are in the Amen Corner. We don't have what we call media membership. We have the Amen Corner. Those in the Amen Corner pray for us and, and they bless us through the giving of their tithes and the offerings, those that don't have a local church there. And, and we're just so thankful for each and every one of you. Uh, as the Lord tarries, we're going to find more of Him, more, more viewable, 
more eyesight in the days ahead, and I'm so thankful for that. We love you. If you do, if you do desire to be a, a, a blessing to this ministry, pray for us. Pray that we'd hold this blood-stained banner to the finish line. And if God stirs your heart to give, that's between you and Him. We don't beg people for money. God stirs the hearts of, of those uh, to follow Him who will support true ministry, the, the true untainted preaching of the cross, teaching of the cross uh, without mixture. Hallelujah. He, he stirs the hearts to, of those who do that. And I'm thankful for those who do that all over really the world now coming into Crossway Church are those who are seeing the great need for the focus of the gospel, which is the cross of Christ. You can give on thecrosswaychurch.com, the website, or simply pull your phone out and text the word GIVE to the number 903-231-5950. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you in the morning on Cross Time with Pastor Curtis at 9 a.m. sharp central time. Until then, God bless you. Stay determined to know absolutely nothing but Christ and Him crucified.